Good evening and welcome to the Friday Night Frenzy. Our President Harvey will join us in just a few minutes. For now, I'm Amy Zimmer and the rest of the team will join us shortly as well. Final Friday of August and just like the weather matchups heating up as we enter week two. While most teams are preparing for their second opponent of the year, a handful of squads celebrating season openers, including New Hampshire. The Phoenix kicking off 2023 against the Windsor Forest Knights and that's where we begin first. Let's get right to it, starting at Pooler Stadium. Yeah, New Hampshire, they came ready to play. Phoenix leading the Knights 46-6 at the half. Third quarter, New Hampshire defense all over the Knights offense. Sean Hamilton with the big quarterback sack, taking down Cameron Campbell for the loss. And the Phoenix have good field position once again. New Hampshire quarterback Rashawn Truell fakes the handoff. The pass over the middle to Jalen Hampton. He outraces the defense for a 29-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter. The Phoenix roll on to a whopping 59-6 win. All right, the Friday night frenzy is just getting started. Still to come, taking you to matchups across southeast Georgia, including a crosstown rivalry between Liberty County and Bradwell Institute, plus taking you back to the low country. Welcome back to the Friday Night Frenzy here on WJCL 22 and I'd like to welcome in our Preston Harvey now and from the Carolina Clash game of the week to a longtime rivalry. A lot of ground to cover. That's right and no time to waste. I mean no time to waste at all. But <laughs> first we're taking you to May River High School for the Sharks season opener against West Ashley. Let's get it going. 
Beginning of the new era at May River, Richard Bonneville making his debut after being named head coach back in March. Just the second head coach in school history. Picking this one up in the second quarter, two minutes left. West Ashley leading 21 to seven, third and long. The Wildcats looking to take advantage. Jalen Pickney with the reception, however, not too much room to run. Quickly taken down, forcing a fourth down. West Ashley deciding to take a field goal and is good from a little over 25 yards out. Wildcats take a 24 to seven lead into the locker room. The Shark Tank student section not giving up on their team, trust me. That energy plus a pep talk from coach and May Rivers defense comes out firing on all cylinders. How about this though, take a look at this now. The Sharks playing physical and forced a fumble, ball is loose and May River recovers. The players all fired up for that play. Quarterback Tanner Macy putting the offense on his back now. Big shout out to the offensive line on this play. Macy able to pick up the big game. Sharks though unable to find the end zone in the second half, ball into West Ashley, 31 to seven the final. Time to head back to the Peach State for one of the biggest matchups of the night. Oh yeah, how about a good old fashioned rivalry early in the season? Our Dave Williams shows us. Bragging rights for Liberty County are on the line here tonight as the host Liberty County Panthers welcome their crosstown rivals, the Bradwell Institute Tigers, here to Donnell Woods Stadium. And both teams will be looking for their first victory of the campaign after losing their season openers last week. And it was an emotional time before the game as the family of the late Liberty County head coach Kurt Warner was on hand for the coin toss. To the game now, and Bradwell sets the tone on their very first play from scrimmage as quarterback C.J. Garrett airs it out deep downfield to Jazia Thomas down inside the Liberty County 35. They would cap it off a few plays later as Garrett throws it up and Bryant Thomas comes down with it despite the pass interference. The two-point conversion made it 8-0 Bradwell. But Bradwell was just getting started later in the first. Tyon Jones takes the flip from Garrett and then shows off his athleticism all the way to the payoff pasture. The two-pointer failed and it was 14-0 Tigers. The Tigers kept roaring in the second quarter. Wade Cobb with a short TD plunge. The PAT failed and it was 20 to nothing. The Panthers finally get on the scoreboard late in the first half as Carlos Kevarine Singleton keeps it and finds the end zone. Those are the first points of the season for Liberty County. 20 to six Bradwell at that point. But it wasn't enough as Bradwell goes on to win 26 to 13. In Liberty County, Dave Williams, WJCL 22 News. All right, thanks so much, Dave. On Wilmington Island, first home game of the season for St. Andrews. The Lions look to build off an impressive 34-0 win over Thomas Jefferson Academy last week, hosting Valwood High of Valdosta. Okay, jumping to this opening drive, Lions quarterback Zayden Edwards showing off the arm early. Connects with Richard Williams for the touchdown. Two-point conversion good. How about the Lions jumping out to an 8-0 lead? Bellwood responds on their first drive. Tristan White gets the handoff, breaks left, tight ropes the sideline. Yeah, he's going all the way into the end zone. Failed two-point conversion, cuts Lions lead 8-6. to six. Okay, buckle up. We've got eight ball game. Second quarter, don't blink. It's Lions' Amari Cook on the carry and not going to be stopped. 15-6 St. Andrews. Now, Valwood would climb in front at the half and they would never look back. 50-29 to 29 the final. All right, time to take you to our Carolina Clash game of the week. Buford High School back at home for the first time since being crowned SCHSL 3A champions last fall. And Preston, you started the night there. How much excitement was building around this matchup? Amy, it was buzzing. The Eagles hosting Fort Dor Dorchester <laughs> with a special guest in the stands, and it was one that really had everybody on their heels. This one got off to an exciting start for the Eagles. Check this out. As they recover the onside kick on the opening kickoff, Caleb Ulmer doing honors with the recovery. And then as Ulmer finishing off that drop for Buford, as he takes it into the end zone, PAT was good, seven to nothing Buford. Now on the ensuing kickoff, the Eagles had so much fun with the first onside kick, you know, they just had to do it again. Recovery again, and that will lead to a field goal and a 10 to nothing lead. But despite that, Fort Dor Dorchester comes back to win 34 to 17. Now, former NFL player and Buford alum Ron Parker being honored at halftime by having his jersey retired. He says this is something he always wanted. It's a, it's a dream come true. Um, every kid dreams of, dream of this moment of having their jersey retired. It gives every kid hope, and that's all you can ask for from uh, for kids growing up. Uh, from Buford County, um, 
All kids want to do is see somebody make it. And when they see somebody make it, they follow their dreams and give them hope. So I'm, I'm hoping that me making it, having my jersey retired tonight, I'm hoping I give a lot of these kids around here hope. And that's just my goal, man, just to, to teach all these kids the way. Parker spending eight years in the NFL playing for five different teams, most notably six years in Kansas City. He finishes his Chiefs career with nearly 400 total tackles and eight sacks. Now listen to this, setting the franchise record for the most sacks by a defensive back. Awesome to have him back in town. Okay, the Daphne Park, John Paul II, Golden Warriors visiting the Bethesda Blazers. Second quarter, Blazers up 22 to 0. Quarterback Tristan Randall drops back, pass overthrown. Golden Warriors, Jackson Riley with the interception. John Paul II tries to turn it into a score. However, Blazers, Orlando Cheney not going to allow it. It would remain 22 0 at the half. Right out of the break, here comes the Blazers. Randall with the rocket to Caleb Dillon. See you later. Two-point conversion, no good, but still 28-0 Bethesda. And they would keep John Paul II off the board. 44-0 the final. Over in the low country, Bluffton season home opener against Jenkins. The Bobcats looking for their second win in a row, while the Warriors seeking the first of the young season. First drive of the game, quarterback Owen Baines and receiver Carnell Warren linking up. Good blocking and up for a first down. Warren, though, upset with himself for not picking up more yards on that play. Now, very next play, Baines calling his own number right up the middle, showing off his dual threat ability. The Warriors, though, with a big takedown, however, unable to stop the moving of the chains. Bluffton unable to score a touchdown on the opening drive, but able to get a field goal, three to nothing, Bobcats on top. Jenkins looks to get active on their first drive, and they do so with this play. Check this out. Jeremiah James shaking and baking, connecting with Trenton Rhodes, and take a look at this. The speed, nearly a 60-yard gain for the junior receiver. And now one big play leads to another. With momentum on their side, Ryan Scott right up the middle, first touchdown of the game. Extra point, though, no good, 6-3 to three Jenkins. Now Jenkins will go on and take this one, 41-30, to 30, the final, over Bluffton. Still to come on the Friday Night Frenzy, taking you to the Hill for a big matchup between Ware County and Richmond Hill. That's right, plus breaking down the Frenzy, Friday Night Frenzy Player of the Week. Keep it here.
Welcome back to the Friday Night Frenzy. Okay, Preston, this next matchup, the stands were packed. That's right. It was a big matchup on the gridiron right here. Rick Snow was in Richmond Hill tonight where the Wildcats were looking for revenge for one of the losses from over a year ago. Richmond Hill and Ware County both won their season openers a week ago. The Wildcats are trying to rebound from a 3-7 and seven record a year ago, which included a 20-7 loss to the Gators. The Gators would then go on undefeated and win the 5A state championship. In the first quarter, the Wildcats are moving as Kirk Scott completes the pass to the sidelines for Nick Bliss and a huge first down. But the Ware County defense stops the drive as the defensive end comes from the backside to stop the play for a loss. Later, the Gators are in punt formation, but they snap the ball to the up back Dejon Dennis, and he picks up the important first down. R.J. Boyd would finish off the drive with a punishing run up the middle to the end zone, and it was 7 to nothing Gators. Ware County's defense was warming the Wildcats all night. The offense was stopped on plays like this for losses, forcing them to give up the ball. Late in the first half, Luke Hooks fires a pass to the end zone on the far side, and it's good for a 14-0 lead with a minute left until halftime, and Ware County wins their 17th straight game, 28-7 over Richmond Hill. Rick Snow, WJCL 22 News. Thanks, Rick. Okay, Thursday night lights at Pooler Stadium. Savannah Christian Raiders hosting the Island Sharks. Raiders coming off a shutout win. Sharks still in the hunt for their first. Second quarter, Island's down 42 to 7. Quarterback Amari Bedgood airs it out. How about this? Intercepted by Raiders' Jamari McIvory. Shakes off a shark. Teammate Jaden Miles with the block to get McIvory all the way into the red zone. Raiders quickly punch it in. Zoe Smalls with the honors here. Savannah Christian takes a 49-7 lead. Raiders marching right back down the field. Quarterback Blaze Thomas to who other than McIvory breaks right into the end zone. He goes McIvory having a night. 56-7 Savannah Christian. Islands would score once more in the second half. However, unable to climb back in this one. 56-14 Raiders the final. Now for our play of the week, we take you back to Brattle at Liberty County and Brattle quarterback C.J. Garnett throwing it up and Bryant Thomas makes the great leaping catch for the touchdown, despite the pass interference in a 26-13 Bradwell win. Now the college football season kicking off right here on WJCL 22 this Saturday. South Carolina State facing Jackson State in Atlanta, kickoff set for 7.30 p.m. And that's going to do it for this week of the Frenzy. Thank you so much for joining us. For Preston Harvey, I'm Amy Zimmer. Have a great night.